bro, bro, please, please don't do this, bro. Austin, bro. You gotta have a cinematic ball with your customers. Bro, are you shaking? Bro, are you shaking? <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and rarely tech related. Gen 2! As always, I'm John Taylor. And I'm Austin Claypool. We're glad you're watching this new season of Gen 2. Now let's check out this week's game releases. First up in gaming news is Sifu. This third-person beat-em-up action-adventure game features intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. It puts you in control of a young kung fu student on his path of revenge throughout the city to hunt down the assassins who killed his family. Sifu is set to be released on February 8th on PC, PS4, and PS5. Next up is Ali Ali World. This is the third entry in the Ali Ali series, and it's never too late to jump in, especially with an all new art style. Cruise through Radlandia, pull off gnarly combos, and compete for high scores on your search for Nirvana. When Ali Ali World slides onto Nintendo Switch on February 8th. That's all for this week. Subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss next week's game release update. Now time for some packs. Next up is John Taylor with On The Leaderboard. Welcome to On The Leaderboard. Each week I go game to game showcasing and analyzing what it takes to be the fastest. And then I see if I have what it takes to be on the leaderboard. Let's jump straight into this week's game, Enter The Gungeon. Into the Gungeon is no doubt my favorite game, and what better way to show you love this game than try to beat it as quickly as you possibly can. That shows true mastery. So the question is, how do you become a master in speedrunning Gungeon? Play the game, play it a lot, and watch the best players play, like on this website, speedrun.com. This website has a huge database of games with their own times, with different categories, and can show you who the best players are in the games you're playing. I will be referring back to this website a lot in this series, so expect it in the future. Enter the Gungeon has lots of different categories with some really quick times, but today we're going to spend our time mainly focusing on the one character turbo any percent speedrun. And although I would like to consider myself an expert in this game, having myself a good amount of hours and would say this is my all time favorite game, I'm nowhere close to what some of the top players can do. With my prior knowledge of the Gungeon already, I think I have a pretty strong chance of being one of the fastest. Starting out the matter is the character choice. With the top three most picked characters in this category, Paradox, the Bullet, and the Gunslinger, which my obvious choice is the Gunslinger. Starting through with the Gungeon, first turning on turbo mode by going to Tonic the Sludge Dog, keeping that speed. Now it's off to the Gungeon. With speed on your mind, it's all about reading the rooms, reading the gungeon, and having luck on your side. First floor boss, gunslinging bird. Take down quickly. And then RNG gives me the snake maker. Not bad at all. Next floor we go, on to the next floor. Snake maker making them have a chance to turn into snakes. Another chest. A trash can. Not too bad. Yeah. I got it. Jolter isn't too bad. It'll help fight the bomb. Oh, which is the worst second floor one. The Amoconda. After a bit of dancing around, it's finally dead. No hits. But then it gives me this laser light. Not so good. Well, next floor we go. After nothing much going through the third floor, I just try to fight the boss as quick as I can. Let's see who it is. The Treadnought. Huh. Not easy, but I'll take it down. Nice. Another no hit. And then RNG gives me a Jomini rifle. Also not so great. Well, fourth floor. Almost there. Fighting through the fourth floor. Switching through weapons from Jolter to the trash can just to clear these rooms. Then all of a sudden, the shop has a legendary weapon. As RNG Jesus granted me the cactus. Which destroys. Uh, uh, undefeated. Clearly, with the keys. How about the boss? Wall mounted. Pretty difficult boss. Cactus? I made the stretch of the keys pretty quickly. Triple crossbow. 
Look at that. What? Final floor. Hi, Dragon. Here I come. Finding the shop first. I know. I can sense the boss is near. But? Boss? Right next door? I know exactly where it is. I love it. It's boss time, baby. Cactus equals HP Shredder. With the first phase down, this is looking like an easy one shot. Taking out the final heart, and it is over. Now to completely finish the run and stop the time, you've got to navigate through the end of the halls, all the way to the chest. Grab the gun. Finally, end it. And with a time of 16 minutes and 18 seconds, that places us in this category at 39th place. Not the best, but at least I'm on the leaderboard. Hello everyone and welcome back to your brand new season of The Rundown. I'm your host Garrett Bevan. Today I'm not going to waste any of your time. Today we're going straight into the first game for the new season. So here we go with Forza Horizon 5 released in 2021. Let's get right into it. Up first we have the story for Forza Horizon 5 and there really isn't one which is actually a good one in this case. So if you don't know what Forza Horizon is, it is a ongoing series as you can tell for it being the fifth installment where you just race cars just for the fun of it. It's a big festival with tons of great music and over 500 cars that you can spend so many hours tinkering on, buying and selling with other players, exploring different liveries and customization options, and much more. Trust me, it's pretty creative what they allowed you to do here in this game. In the end, you're just a superstar here for this festival. You're kind of the head honcho in charge of everything. And just make sure everyone has a good time. That's basically what the whole point of the game is. The plot isn't that important. It's just go out, drive fast, and have fun. Speaking of driving fast, that's one of the core gameplay mechanics with, of course, the most important thing of every game, the gameplay. The core gameplay for Forza Horizon 5 is surprisingly racing. I know, who would have thought it's a racing game? But in all seriousness, there are tons of variety for racing in the game. From dirt to gravel, pavement, drag racing, cross-country races, it's the sky's the limit pretty much in Forza 5. So maybe you're tired of racing against other people and trying to hit the fastest time around the lap. That's completely fine. Forza does a ton of things right in this regard to breaking up your in-between races and just doing things in general. Just drive around the game. That's what I do. I cruise pretty much. Drift around corners, go off-road in a car that shouldn't go off-road, smash through billboards, just talk to other players, just have fun. That's the whole point of the game. It's just to jam out to some great hits, which is fantastic, by the way. The music is just amazing in this game. And just... Have fun, that's all it really is. It's made for you to have fun. It does not take itself seriously at all. It has a car from Halo in it, so I mean, come on. It's not that serious of a racing game if it has that, but it's just fun. I recommend picking it up and playing it. But let's say you get bored of cruising. Well, good news, like I said, racing is just all over the place. If you don't like what the game makes, never fear. You can make your own race and throw it out there for hundreds of thousands of people to drive. It's literally all about you, as I've mentioned a numerous amount of times in this game. But let's say you want something big and grand. Well, the Forza Horizon series has done a fantastic job of having over-the-top, crazy events that happen in the game. For instance, the very first time you start the game, you jump out of a flying airplane in a Ford Bronco, getting to the festival site. I mean, that's a great way to kick it off. On top of that, here in this clip, you have me racing against guys on a wingsuit and a plane. I mean, what more can you really ask for in a racing game? That does it for episode one of the rundown for this season. I'm really happy to be back. I'm happy to be making things that I enjoy doing, and hopefully you guys liked it. I'm looking forward to just making new content every week, just trying to do the best that I can for you guys. If you like what you see, check out the other things here on KNWT from Nerd Central. If you like sports, Bearcat Update, and much more. I'm your host, Garrett Bevins, and this has been The Rundown. Have a good one. There are stories all around us. From the talents of individuals, the goodness of volunteers, and the generosity of nonprofits, Amazing Things has highlighted these stories for six seasons. This spring, join us as we continue that tradition, focusing on those who strive to leave a lasting legacy and a positive impact in the lives of those around them. And while you're watching, ask yourself, what, what is, is your amazing, amazing thing? thing?
it halfway through already. How? We just started. You know, that's what happens when you're having fun, John. Okay, 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 okay. Austin, that was way too cheesy. You gotta learn how to balance it, man. Okay, all right? I'm sorry. It's just hard filling in Brad's shoes. No, no, no. Don't, don't, just don't, don't even try, all right? Just do your one face thingy, you know, eh, like you did in that one commercial, like everybody wants to see, you I know. I just you've... don't want to be known for just... Just do it. <sighs> what? Uh, you guys left the best one for me. I pick GameCube. <laughs> Uh, it's embarrassing how good you are at that. The story's got it wrong. Hair crushes tortoise every time. How awesome was that rush? For me, I mean. For you, not so much. Jumping up, headed high overhead. Say goodbye every time. That I rise, you'll be staring death right in the eyes. I could run circles around you all day. Hello everyone tuning in. I'm your host Brandon and this is Apex and Chill, where we're gonna be playing Apex Legends and chilling, essentially. Apex Legends is a first person shooter that encompasses the intense battle royale theme and lets you choose characters with different abilities to help you win. I'm going to be playing different game modes including trios, duos, ranked leagues, and arenas for this show. Okay, so let's get started. We are landing at Fragment East in World's Edge. So this is the second map that came out after King's Canyon. And this is when they this is when they added Horizon. No, not Horizon. This is when they added like Revenant and all of these characters, if I'm not wrong. Fact check me if I am wrong. So yeah, we're landing at Fragment East. There's a dude right there that my teammate punches. Look at that, Watson. Man, my teammate punches him. I grab a Havoc, and I miss every single shot. Every single shot I missed. And this dude just punches him until he dies. And we come over here. He's blocking the door, but I'm, I'm teabagging him. Look, <laughs> Teabagging the guy. He's dead. Now, this is the next clip. So, I'm walking out here, and there's an Octane in the corner. Look at that. So he snipes me, and I just die instantly. So this is my first attempt, this is my first game on, and this was a trios, so we're playing trios this week, and I die there, I think this guy had like 7k kills, or 1, 1, 1. 1.5. So this clip right here is from my next game, which I actually won this game, this is the last fight right here, I'm going to show you this fight because this fight's really really cool, I thought I was about to lose this fight. And right here, look at that, that person is basically, so that totem is like a death totem, which lets you turn into a zombie basically, and when you lose like your health from it, it sends you back. So that person came back and absolutely got torched by us. I can pop smoke as Bangalore, that is the legend that I played, so she's like a, she's the offensive type that I was talking about earlier, and how all these legends are categorized in classes. So I jump up that way. And here this is the last part right here where we're shooting off. I'm using the vault and I switch back. And I almost lose this. I was so close. And we were winners. And I killed the kill leader also. So that's, you know what that means. I'm the kill leader. That's all I have for you this week. Subscribe to the KMWT YouTube channel and I'll see you guys next week. Hello, and welcome to GameCube, the show where I dive deep into my favorite childhood GameCube games. As always, I'm your host Austin Claypool, and today we'll be looking at one of my favorites, Super Mario Sunshine. Super Mario Sunshine is a platformer title released in 2002 by the one and only Nintendo. It's their second ever 3D Mario title, coming right after Super Mario 64. But if you're unfamiliar with how the story goes, here's a basic rundown. <clears throat> Mario and Princess Peach are chilling in their personal jet on their way to have a nice vacation when all of a sudden, wham bam shazam, they come across this strange goo on the tarmac. While investigating the mess, Peach sees a mysterious shadowy figure. This is our main villain, Shadow Mario. More on him later. As Mario tries to figure out the solution to the problem, we meet Flood, or the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device. This will be your main companion in the game. It's also one of the reasons why this game is so great. 
But anyway, back to the story. Shadow Mario has been causing chaos and leaving goo all over Isle Delfino, and since Shadow Mario resembles Mario, and the townspeople are complete idiots, Mario gets blamed for the mess, and he's tasked with cleaning it up. Phew! And that's where the game really starts. There's so many things I love about this game, but just to highlight the best, here are a few. Gameplay. The gameplay in Super Mario Sunshine is fantastic. It's an incredible advancement from Super Mario 64, where the movement, while groundbreaking at the time, felt restricted. Not in this game, though. There's plenty to explore with the help of Flood and its many different nozzles. You start the game off with two different types of nozzles, one for aiming and spraying goo, the other for hovering. As the game progresses, you unlock more interesting nozzles to play around with. Overall, as you jump, dive, hover, and spin your way through Isle Delfino, you'll have a blast. Music. What can I even say about the music besides, wow? I mean, you heard that bop I played at the intro, right? Besides that, each world in Super Mario Sunshine has its own feel, and none of the music sounds bad. I mean, listen to the soundtrack for my favorite world, Noki Bay. Plot points. I'll say this now so nobody can get mad at me. Spoiler alert even though this game is two decades old. So we already discussed how the game starts, but what about the ending? What? We're, we're skipping right to the ending? Okay, I guess. After collecting the seventh shine from each world, you will unlock the final level of the game, Corona Mountain. Avoiding the lava, spikes, and fire, you can make it to the final boss level, which is none other than Bowser. Oh yeah, so you know the main villain, Shadow Mario? Well, it turns out he's actually Bowser Jr. in disguise. And for some reason he believes that Princess Peach is his mother, and Bowser doesn't really deny it, so like, how did that work? Anywho, that's all the time I've got for this week. Make sure to tune in next week for another episode of GameCubed. Thanks for watching. We are KNWT an award-winning media outlet making new shows every week just for you. In our pursuit to bring you the highest quality content, we have been ranked among the top college television stations in the United States. Our work has been recognized and awarded by the College Media Association Pinnacle Awards and the Missouri Broadcasters Education Association. To check out these winning episodes and more, you can find us on YouTube at KNWT Channel 8. This is the channel that keeps you connected to Bearcat Sports. Features, highlights, interviews. Which is also one of the best records in school history. I think it also puts a lot of pressure on us because every team is going to play us really hard. Now back left side, Hudges, D3, left side, yes sir! And these runners compete at the highest level in D2 sports. Let's take it from the track to the field. I'm Destiny Adams. And I'm Brody Wallace. And you're, you're watching, watching Bearcat, Bearcat Update on KWT Channel 8. 8. real quick and explain trivia murder party so players are tasked with answering trivia questions and if you get it wrong then you are sent to play a mini game and whoever the loser is turns into a ghost and that ghost will later on have a lower chance of winning in the end game whoever dies first at the end of this game is the one who will get the punishment of delta and this time it'll be a pie in the face not too bad just a classic punishment so let's get to it okay First question. Which of the following is not traditionally in white chocolate? 
Google's trivia. That's Use your cool. device to answer the question. And the correct answer is... I knew it! Well, okay. I'm off to a great start. Woo! Let's go! We're at risk. Lights out. Yeah. Lights out. Lights out. Lights out. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, that's that, was, awesome. that was last season. All right. Yeah, Google. Google. Uh, the lost Google. art of letter writing. I'm going to dictate, going to dictate message to you. a message. Write down as much, down as of, much what as of what I say as you can. Oh, the player who writes the player the fewest the fewest oh, Wait, no! <laughs> Are we supposed to listen to the audio? <laughs> Are you yeah. serious? I was only able to check for like a second, and I then I stopped typing. Let's go! Yeah, and they disappeared from my screen! Aww, oh, yes. Big L. Dear ah, I did it! Ah. That's so bad. At F. F. Come on, Lauren. Looks like Lauren's about to... Oh, you exploded into this loser. <laughs> Lauren wasn't expecting her to lose. The shadow oh. realm. Imagine being bad at this game. I... <laughs> Alright, Garrett, calm down. Yeah, Garrett, how All about right, you Garrett. just leave like you're you you I'm get sorry, it. okay? What's, What's the name of the witch from the- Oh, yes, I just yeah. read this! Everyone knows this, everyone knows this. I don't this. know this. I don't know this. <laughs> you actually are dumb if you don't. No, uh, hey, 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 all right, all right. I just, just read it last, last week. I might be, so I might I be wrong. What is this? Yeah. Good job, Austin. I didn't know it. Oh, this is kind of close. Let's keep moving. According to legend, who tried to make their horse a senator? What? No, this. What? Oh, it's a great compatriot. No! Did we all get this wrong? Oh, I was just talking about it too. I was like, seriously, that's too hard. Okay. Uh oh, I'm gonna tattoo on my back by drawing. I see it. Oh, wow. Gen 2, that's a sucky tattoo. Oh, that's a the, it's a palm tree, right, guys? Oh, it's, a, it's a palm tree. You said that out loud. Hey. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's how it is. Yep. No one agrees. I'll have to laser this off. I'm going to laser this off. Who wrote that? She made fun of my tattoo. That's what Lauren's mean. Oh, you got shot. Uh-oh. 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 U
that's all we have for this week on Project Delta. We'll see you guys next week as we uh, endure more punishments and play more games together. Bye.